Okay, so as you know, I've got my virtual machine sorted out pretty much. So, I mean, my, not my virtual machine, my Ubuntu sorted out the way I wanted it. Uh, but there was, a, there was one problem for the past, what, over a week now, I was searching on the internet for a Zoom tool, which is a bit like the Zoom It tool I've used on Windows XP. You know, where you can zoom into the desktop. Because sometimes you get this text right. And um, and it's so small, you can't read it. And um, anyway, I contacted a guy, he, he, uh, a YouTube channel, um, uh, Linux for Seniors, I think it's called. And I, I sent a private message, well, a comment to him. Um, I said I'd be struggling trying to find a, a tool. And apparently it's already built in. I just needed to know the, um, I just needed to know the right keys to press. <clears throat> so he told me, he said, when you want to zoom in, so I've marked my keys in red, right? I use a red pen because I keep forgetting. So you have to press, you have to press the Windows key, the Alt, the Alt key and the 8 key. And the A key kind of makes sense. It looks like a pair of eyes if you look at it from the side. So if I press these two keys and the A key right, together, right? Oh, damn it. I didn't press it. Then the A key. Now look at my desktop. <laughs> it's zoomed right in. Look. And now I can move my mouse around. And it zoomed right into his to Bytex um, thing. So if I press that those keys again, if I press the Windows key, the Alt key, the 8 key again, it zooms back out. So yeah, I found it. It's already built in. I just didn't know how to do it. And uh, so anyone else that's stuck, that's in Ubuntu, uh and wants to zoom into the desktop and the good thing about it is it even does it while they're playing it so if i mute the sound right i mute the sound and play it while he while it's actually if i press the windows key and the alt key and the a key again it zooms in while it's playing which is even better because you can actually see all these mouse movements and everything while while he's actually doing his video so you can see him moving and you've got to pan around though um, because obviously he's into different parts of the desktop, so he's showing us how to do, how to do the this other stuff, right? So I've, let's zoom back out again. All right, so it goes back out. So it works pretty well. So anyway, that's how you do it. Life and out. Okay, so one of the biggest problems with um, older versions of Windows, which are no longer supported by Microsoft, uh, Windows XP, for example is that uh, the update server, no, uh, the activation server, no longer works, right? So uh, let's say you've got backups, right? Um, so one of the problems I keep coming across is over time, you know, you you restore your backup. And obviously, because it might have been a couple of years, two or three years or something since you restored the backup, and you've got new hardware, you've got a new hard drive, you've had to restore, <coughs> you had to replace hardware, you've got a new hard, hard drive, you've got probably two or three new hard drives, right? And all of a sudden Windows pops up this message on the screen saying um, significant hardware changes. Oh, I keep seeing that, right? <laughs> Windows needs to be reactivated. Wow. Well, so, right, what do you do? You can't activate it, right? So you go, you say, would you like to activate? It says, would you like to activate Windows now? And you think, yeah, okay, because it's mine. I bought it, so why not? So <laughs> you're on the internet. Uh, you shouldn't be because it's dangerous with the viruses and malware and everything else. And So you click on activate now, and what happens? Uh, Windows pops up with a message and it says windows is not not able to um it's not able to access the windows server activate server and you think, oh no i'm screwed 
and the only other option it gives you is a phone number but do you really want to be ringing that phone number is it going to cost you a fortune it might do i'm not sure i've never used it to be honest with you but uh so basically you, you you're screwed right you have a windows backup and you've got all your old software on it like me and you want to use the old software that's you can't even download it anymore because it's They've gone through and basically, what's the word, um, leached it or removed it or whatever. The, the sites that it used to be on are no longer there. So you can't, you can't reinstall that software anyway and you're stuck. And you've got all these old configuration files for your video editing tools or you got whatever it is. It might be uh, SketchUp. Uh, for doing your PCB designs and you can't even use that anymore because you can't access the internet anyway so you, you're buggered there because I can't use SketchUp anymore it doesn't work um, so you, you, you're you really messed up right but anyway uh, then you come across some guy who's a genius and he found, he's found well unsur unsurprisingly Windows is full of bugs and it's it's very buggy, it's very glitchy, it's fault it has so many faults with it. And he found a way to activate Windows without even going on the internet. Hmm, cool, right. Brilliant. So anyway, I'll put a link down below. Because let's face it, it's obsolete now. Yeah, uh, you can't even buy it. I mean officially it would be a waste of time because you can't you can't buy it and then install it. And activate it because you can't activate it, right? So what do you do? Anyway, the, the, there are people out there who found a way around the problem, and um, which is great. But as I say, you can't use the internet on it anymore because it's not safe. Um, there's a, a security vulnerability. Hang on, what's it called? A minute. Hang on, let me just remember. <laughs> Pause a sec. Yeah, there's a there's a security problem with the kernel, right? The kernel is. That's spelled K E R N E L L. Is it Kernel 32? I think it is. Or is it Kernel? Anyway, it's Kernel 32, whatever. Because of this problem, because the kernel is basically wide open to attack by viruses and malware and things, you, you, you just can't use it on the internet anymore. It's not safe, right? So basically, it's only really useful to. Us old geeks or old, I'm not really a geek, but <laughs> us old farts who who can't let an old thing go. Because, I mean, it's it's a bit like my granddad. He was setting his ways. And, yeah, there's, there was a saying, and you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And uh, basically what that means is you, you just... You don't like new stuff. You like to stick with the past. You like, you like the old, antiquated uh ways of doing things and i i liked the older ways of doing things i mean i used to like windows 95 at the, but it was always crashing it was it was a nightmare because it was always blue screening on you it was constantly crashing it was so many problems and it was only when xp came along that we had less of that we still get it occasionally but it's not as bad as it used to be so I, I liked XP. It was it was good for doing what I wanted to do, you know, doing batch batch files. I like to write batch files and I wrote these really long batch files that <coughs> used to automate some of my little things that I like to do. Like, for example, uh, synchronizing data from one computer to the other computer. So I would use a download computer, right? Um, because I didn't want to use my main computer for downloading stuff, right? If you're using Tor or Torrent or whatever it is. But, <clears throat> so I'd leave a, a cheap, low power consumption laptop or netbook running in the background, which didn't use much electric at all. It was very economical. And I didn't want to use my main machine because <clears throat> using leaving your main computer switched on like 24 hours a day uh, is extremely wasteful uh, as far as electricity goes. So I would use this little netbook. So, but that caused me a problem because all the files that I would I'd download, like Linux, Tor, Linux, for example, if you wanted to download Linux, it might take you two or three days to download it on the torrent. Or if you were downloading some other tools and things like that, you it would take sometimes two or three days to download them because we're talking about years ago, like when the internet was even worse, like dial-up. And so 
all the files would be on the other netbook and I, I, I got sick of um, browsing over the network to the other computer to copy files from that one to my main computer which is where I wanted to use it right so I made this little batch program that would um, uh, check in the downloads folder for new downloads so you know to see if there were if there was a, a new download and I'd change the attributes of the files for archive so I'd, I'd remove the archive uh, switch for anything that I'd copied over so the A was for archive so once I'd copied it over it would remove the A the archive um, flag from that file because so, I'd know I'd already the batch would know that it had already copied it over and it wouldn't copy it again and again and again otherwise I'd end up with yeah problems so <clears throat> anyway I used to use this tool and uh, uh, just lately, I haven't used it anymore because, let's face it, I mean, most of the stuff I can't get anymore. I mean, for Windows, you can't really download a lot of stuff for Windows now anyway, so there's not much point. But um, it's still, I still want to use it, though. Every now and then I want to go back to it. It's nostalgic, you know. It's, it's to me, it's like, it's like taking a step back in time. It's nostalgic. I like using some of the old tools, and it's just cool to use them. And... It's mainly my flight gear because that's CVS and open source and I like to use the flight gear and um, I can't use it on anything else because the files are all configured for XP. They're not configured for anything else. And um, Anyway, so this tool, this guy, I saw, I saw this video earlier tonight. This guy has a way of reactivating Windows, which is really cool. Anyway, so I'll, uh, I'll put up a, a link to it in the end screen um a little box uh was it over here so anyway just keep an eye out for that little box that comes up you go and check it out and if you're really stuck and suffering in windows xp um maybe maybe his solution will sort you out maybe it will help thanks for watching bye for now